Scarface came out in 1983, and it's a two-hour and 50-minute move, a long runtime. There, it's rated R. Of course, it stars the great Al Pacino as Tony Montana, and Michelle Pfeiffer as uh, Elvira shows up here. We got Stephen Bayer, uh, Mary Elizabeth Mastrant. We also have Robert um, Lagia, Miriam Colon, E. Murray Abraham, Paul Shiner. Uh, to name a few, and I'm really horrible at pronouncing names, so I do apologize if my uh, tongue has slipped on your last names. I do apologize about that. But it is directed by Brian De Palma, and its writers are Oliver Stone with the screenplay. And, of course, this is based off the 1932 film, so we get some uncredited screenplay um, credits here, too, for Howard Hawks and Ben Hiked from that 1932 Scarface original film. And if you haven't seen this movie in a long time, it basically takes place in 1980s Miami. A determined Cuban immigrant takes over a drug cartel and succumbs to greed. Of course, as they always do. Now, I haven't seen this movie ever until a couple of days ago. And I wanted to sit on my thoughts because I feel like if I talk too soon about it, I, I might you know, not sound really great. And I know this is an iconic movie that a lot of people do love. And one of Brian De Palma's palma's best movies too in his filmography and i don't know why i never watched it I, and like i said i have seen that clip on youtube and other movies thousands of times before the say hello to my little friend it's an iconic piece of uh, cinema history it's uh, an iconic scene it's texted even on the daily notes uh, little intro if you're listening to on the podcast you would catch it there as well and it is it's uh, pretty remarkable as well so uh, scarface and what did i think about scarface First off, the direction by Brian De Palma, he really captures that Cuban feel, I feel, in Miami at that time. It definitely is an 80s movie. It has that vibe and kind of charisma and machismo that uh, you would kind of get from these 1980s movies about these guys who are kind of man, man, manly men, I guess, and they would go over and try to take over stuff. So I think Al Pacino also kind of embodies the kind of the feel of this movie. Super charismatic guy. He has a crazy accent here, but who cares? It's it's Al Pacino as this um, cartel leader, a Scarface. He's uh, swinging charisma left and right, and uh, getting women that he wants to. It's it's a very entertaining performance. Maybe not my favorite Pacino performance, but it is highly entertaining. Uh, he has everything going for him. He, he's larger than life in this movie, and it definitely shows by his uh, his outing as Tony Montana. And even though Al Pacino is so great, I don't think his performance would be nearly as good if he didn't have great supporting characters around him. Specifically, I, what I, who I really liked a lot here was uh, Stephen Bayer. I think he gives a really good setup of performance that uh, doesn't overshadow Pacino's crazy machismo that he does, but also he's still just as charismatic as Pacino, but he's not as flashy or as, as vibrant or as bold or in your face, I should say. That's probably the better word as, you know, what Montaigne is doing here. Stephen Bayer does a really cool job here, and uh, there's a lot to do. And I kind of wish I would have seen more of what he is able to do because I think he was super talented. And I probably have seen some movies that he had done. We might take a look at that. But Michelle Pfeiffer also uh, looks stunning as always here, especially 80s Pfeiffer is uh, amazing. Of course, a lot of people, my first experience with Pfeiffer was uh, Batman Returns, it came out in 1992. The Tim Burton classic film. She played Catwoman. It was an, it's an iconic movie. I, uh, I, I'm saying iconic quite a bit in this review. Uh, but anyway, it's an iconic performance from Pfeiffer uh, in Batman Returns. But she's really good in this one as well. She doesn't have as much to do. She's not as showy or as uh, her previous movies I have mentioned. But it's really cool to see Pfeiffer here. I didn't really actually realize that was her uh, because I, maybe I hadn't seen anything pre-90s. So probably a good possibility there. So she didn't look like Michelle Fiverr at first, but now when I see on IMDb that she's in there, of course it's her, right? So uh, Scarface for me is a very entertaining watch. It is a uh, highly, uh, there's a lot of really cool high functioning scenes here that really play uh, really well for the first time watching. It, it might not be my favorite movie about the cartel or this kind of this era. And I think part of that is because uh, the pacing of it for me, it seemed kind of, uh, dragged a little bit in the middle and again this is my first time watching mind you so i think if i watch it again i kind of know what i'm expecting i think in my head when you you see an iconic movie that's beloved and we have people on our website who've given given it like four stars and, and i'm here like okay i've never seen it let's go watch it and i'm like that was good 
but is it like am i missing something it's a great i i think it's super entertaining and it's one of i definitely want to watch again because i think pacino is electric in here and again i like stephen bayer too there's a really a lot of cool things like my favorite scene that i can uh, think of all the t- uh, other than the iconic scenes that you have seen is there's a scene here where they go and they have to try to get some money after this guy and they have to switch some products and Pacino's feeling this guy out and he's feeling him out. Eventually tables turn on Pacino and uh, his brother and there's a chainsaw involved. There's some torture going on. It is straight up bonkers. And I love that shootout and how everything had turned out. I was like, Oh, we're in for a, a ride here. And it definitely to this movie definitely takes you on a ride. I think Brian De Palma does a really good job with his direction here. And it's, uh, it is such a, such a piece of cinema because you know he's known known for this movie and you know what we're going to take a little brian de palma detour on here because i i can't really picture him other movies that he's attached to so let's take a look at i think is that one of the first times that you're like a direct you can't think of anything else that he's done of no note but you just know like he, without even watching movies like yeah that's a that is a scarface's director but brian de palma we're looking at his imdb filmography here Okay, he has a 2006 movie named Black Dahlia, which I've kind of always wanted to see. I heard mixed things about it. Uh, I've seen the 2000 Mission to Mars, Snake Eyes, the Nicolas Cage movie. And there it is right there, Mission Impossible. I totally forgot that he directed Mission Impossible in 1996. But Carlito's Way is another movie that I have not seen. 1993, I might have to make that happen because that's going to be an interesting first-time watch as well. Uh, That's Untouchables. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's a movie I missed last year, 1987, Untouchables. Yeah, so he's saying he's did some bangers of movie movies there. I really like Mission Impossible, Mission Upon Mars. I have to, I haven't, I saw that when I was a kid. So, so that was the only other movie that I'd seen. So now I've seen three De Palma films: uh, Mission Impossible, uh, Mission to Mars, and Scarface. Of course, I think if I had to rank those three films just off merit alone, Scarface would have to be up there as my favorite one. Then in Mission Impossible and Mission to Mars. Definitely interested to see more of his works because I think he does bring a, a creative energy and vibe to his movies. I definitely feel highly energetic. I, but like I said, it, it has that vibe during some sequences for me. I do feel like it does drag a little bit. Again, I, I definitely I feel like I need to see this movie again because I the the third act is bonkers nuts. I think there's seen sequences in this the first act that I really love as well. It's that middle act for whatever reason. I just like there was like an, a 45 minutes. It was like okay, I want to see some more. I, I this is the kind of a lot of good build up for his character in it, of Tony Montana. I get the thing. I want to see some of those iconic sequences. And that's probably my head. It's like I I got I got to get another watch in there because uh, maybe I, my expectations maybe were a little higher than probably you know man I should have made them. It's still a really good, entertaining movie, and I think I'm at three out of three stars for this movie right now. I think it's still it's in my top uh, top five films of 1983. Uh, but let's go to that box office and budget to talk about the financials of this movie, like we do every episode. This movie did come out December 9th, 1983, so right at Oscar season. There, funny enough, I don't think it got any Oscars. Or awkward but the budget here is 25 million dollars and the opening weekend in u.s and canada alone it made 45 million four hundred eight thousand seven hundred three dollars so it made it budget its budget and 20 million dollars more over budget so that's amazing there oh no wait i am totally reading the wrong line they did not make that much money at opening weekend that's how much it made in the states overall opening weekend here came out just um was four million five hundred ninety-seven thousand. That's a big number. That's a big difference there. So the opening weekend in U.S. and Canada was four million five hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars. Gross worldwide, though, is sixty-five million five eighty-eight hundred and four thousand seven hundred three dollars. So it did make its budget. It uh, probably had some of that time with uh, Al Pacino's name attached to it and that iconic performance there. Again. It is a top-rated movie on IMDb at number, I think, what was it? I don't remember. I missed it. I skipped past it. Let's go take a look. IMDb has it as a top-rated movie at number 107 on their rating scale here, so really high up there. I'm looking at the awards, and it has eight nominations overall. The The Golden Globes had nominated this movie for Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture Drama for Al Pacino, Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role, motion picture Stephen Bayer and best original score by 
uh, Giorgio Amorador. Um, again, that um, anyway, really awesome score that I forgot to mention, but yeah, the score was really good. It's really kind of gets that kind of feel going as well. So I really liked that. The uh, motion picture sound of sound editors did nominate this movie for best sound editing and sound effects, but funny enough, Razzie award nominated movie here. And this is interesting. Brian De Palma, worst director nomination at the Razzies. Very interesting uh, take there. Razzies would not have suspected that be a nomination for you guys. But anyway, that is my quick thing takes on scarface really enjoyed this so i feel like scarface definitely deserves another watch let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought of scarface did you guys like it did you guys love it or do you want to just say hello to his little friend let me know in the comment section down below make sure you guys like share and subscribe again my name is adam these are my daily notes and i've almost sideways i'll see you later